Hello, everyone. My name is Austin Bowser from Austin B Media, and I am here talking to uh, the director of You Won't Be Alone, which comes out in theaters this Friday. Um, Grant, thank you, um, and apologies if I mispronounced that. Um, uh, thanks for coming on here and um, taking time out of your day. Uh, it's such a pleasure. Thanks. It's lovely to meet you. Yeah. Um, I've been excited for this film ever since I heard about it at Sundance. I'm always in the mood for a spooky movie. Um, mm -hmm. And so let's talk about the movie. Um, what was the genesis uh, uh, for the idea of You Won't Be Alone? Mm. Um, well, when I decided to do something with a, a horror band, um, which is partly based on the fact that I never normally tend to do genre, because it just, it just felt like I shouldn't almost because it felt unrealistic to dream of it. Um, I sort of, um, I tend to mainly write from the perspective of like stubborn women because I feel like that's the closest I can come to my own <laughs> brain and defining it. I feel like I have the brain of a stubborn woman. Um, so, in, in, and I know I wanted to make something set in this particular time and place, kind of the tail end of the 19th century, which was sort of, a way of life that existed for thousands of years, but is now just completely disappeared almost really, especially in that, at least in that region. Um, and I felt like if you put a stubborn woman in this area, it, it, she's definitely a witch <laughs> just by default, whether or not she has supernatural capabilities. Um, and then just going off of the uh, tradition of women who were accused of witchcraft, historically were accused of taking the shape of another human or an animal, I thought if you just take that element and keep the rest as it is, um, as life, I just wanted to explore that because I thought um, what an amazing way to look at people and being alive. If you're essentially someone living outside of humanity and outside of time because you're living multiple lives. Um, and then I was drawn to doing something that felt like stream of consciousness a bit in the way that Virginia Woolf's uh, writing does uh, through words i wanted to do that with images and then that sense that, that sense uh all of this was also quite unconscious in a, in a sense you know it all comes from somewhere unconscious and I then try to decode it once it's kind of once i've done a verbal vomit onto my laptop <laughs> like i try to decode right so what was the impulse that led to this but i think that's it was those elements that kind of combined into the concept and then what is now the movie yeah and you know Talk about timelessness and almost, I guess, almost play, uh, placelessness. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it's interesting because not a lot of horror movies are set in 19th century Macedonia. Um, <laughs> and I, that just piques my curiosity, you know? It's so why. Um, so, so why 19th century Macedonia for this story specifically? Um, Macedonia to me is just a stand-in for pretty much all of Eastern Europe. Um, and because obviously as soon as I have to go into a period, it has to be a lot of research. And then research can take you to somewhere that's very cerebral, whereas I wanted it to be something I feel connected to. You know, I, I wanted the film to feel like life, not like something that's being studied and analyzed, you know? Um, and then like this way of life that I was talking about, that agra agrarian cyclical way of life, subsistence living that, you know, thousands of years, I just thought take push it to the tail end of that because as recent as it can be, it's more, still, I need to think about what's achievable. As recent as it, as it can be, it's more achievable. It's still, it can feel timeless and connected to all these different times. Um, and then Macedonia, because um, like, I did have to research the dialect of this region in the 19th century, but, even just reading about it, I could hear it because it's how my grandparents spoke, you know, so, and capturing, and, and now no one almost does. So I'm like, if you don't capture this now, it's just lost completely. And it's not, to me, it's not even about like celebrating something or whatever, but like, just, I want to know about what life was like, you know, in, I don't know, Zimbabwe 1827 in a specific village, you know, how did this woman feel in that particular moment? What are her feelings? You know, what is she, want out of life what does she want less you know how is she negotiating what she can't have or can have and you know the more different kinds of consciousnesses from different times of time uh, periods 
we we can have access to. I think the more we know about ourselves, um, but it's it's not even like uh, the ideal. I just want to know, you know. I want to know, and I want to connect. Um, and with this one, I felt like I can't connect. And if I don't put it down in a movie, um, I could lose it, and we could all lose it, you know. Um, and yeah, so that that was that was the impulse. Yeah, and we're seeing a bunch of that go on um, recently. I mean, just this month, we're going to have a Viking tale in The Northman. Um, and it's I've, I've always just kind of loved that whole thing um, because you're right. If we don't talk about it, we lose that history. Um, and that, that's a big thing being discussed right now. Um, but... Yeah, I, I find that interesting for what what this movie is trying to be, to just be like, oh yeah, let's just go to Macedonia, you know, um, as you do. Um, but, so I want to ask, um, did you ever go to uh, any films, that, any specific films that have inspiration for this film, or did, were you just like, all right, I'm just going to write what I want to write, and this is a wholly original idea with nothing... Uh, no influences. Hmm. Um, I, I can't write in terms of conscious influences. I think if I'm trying to write some like someone, even you know when I talk about Virginia Woolf, it was partly because I was reading a lot of Virginia Woolf at the time, and I often am, because she helps me feel more connected to people and places, really, in life. Um, but it's sort of, you know, something came out um, from an unconscious part of me, and I wrote it down, and then I was trying to decode what the influences are. So I think it's almost. Um, even in terms of references on set, like I would use in, um, other films or filmmakers or paintings usually or stories as a way to kind of keep, make help people understand what we're trying to do, but not really in terms of, I think there's only one, consciously there was only one image in the whole movie that I literally copied from another film uh, because I love it. And that's a 1930 Russian film called Earth by Alexander Dovzhenko. There is um, a man, a dead, a, a dead man being carried in a, an open coffin through a village, and like a branch snags his face, um, which I think is so real and poetic and beautiful. And more people need to see that, know that movie because it used to be very famous and now it's disappearing. So I, I remember that being a very conscious choice. I don't remember anything else being a conscious choice. Then I was there for the first time in uh, seven months, and I can see like. 12 influences you know they weren't conscious but like obviously like my unconscious has been shaped by watching literally you know eight thousand films and reading all these books and looking at all these paintings for decades um you know i don't know if i i don't know if i can, i don't know if i would consider myself original or anything at all because i i i you know movies and stories are what's kept me connected to people through a lot of difficult times when i was very isolated not often not, not often by my own choice so, um, uh, you know, I let them enter deeply into my consciousness and souls, and then they stay there. Um, and of course they shape what I do, um, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I can I, there were definitely influences, but like, I think they need to come from that un unconscious part. Because if, and even if you're trying to copy someone, I think if you're doing it consciously, it becomes mechanical and it's pale. Um, if, if you're if you're stealing from someone do it unconsciously it's better for you <laughs> yeah and i kind of tend to do, do, do that too um a friend of mine was asking um like i don't want to do this idea because somebody else has already done it and i'm like just do it but do it your own way mm -hmm. um but uh i i want to ask one more question i i i know we're pressed for time but um what would you want people to know about this movie that maybe they don't know from the synopsis or anything like that? Um, well, I think, uh, so everyone keeps asking me, do you see it as a horror film? And I think it's more up to other people to decide. Um, I, I think it's a horror film in the, in, within the tradition of things like, you know, the same tradition that, you know, started or didn't start, but like that was shaped by things like Frankenstein and Dracula and, you know, leads to Halloween and Scream, you know, these are all great works of art as far as I'm concerned. I think it does belong within that tradition, but if you're looking for a horror film that's scary, it's not 
I don't find it scary. I didn't design it. I think it can be uncomfortable or unnerving, eerie, all kinds of things, but it's mainly a film about people's feelings, uh, you know, rather than trying to make you jump in your seat. Um, and how I, when people were coming on set, to, you know, coming on board and cast and crew, the main thing I was telling them is like, don't think of other films or stories uh, um, as a way to understand the feeling of it. Just think of if a fairy tale, any fairy tale or folk tale was based on a true story uh, of something that someone saw and couldn't quite understand, that, that moment, that event. So we're trying to make the documentary style movie version of that particular story rather than the myth. Um, so this movie is something like if, if a story was based on a fairy tale, uh, so if a fairy tale was based on a true story, this is the true story. Well, um, Grant, thank you for your time. I, I know you've got other interviews to go to, so I won't keep you, but um, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you coming on. The, no, thank uh, you. Thank yeah. You, um, and again, um, this uh, You Won't Be Alone is in theaters April 1st. Thank you.